Hello and welcome to our debate talking about a persistent macular hole. The topic defined is in a patient with a persistent macular hole, inverted flap is the treatment of choice. I'm very happy to be joined by Professor Sebastian Wolf as the moderator and chair of this debate and by our two excellent speakers, Professor Zofia Navrotska from Poland and Professor Stano, Stanislav Rizzo from Italy. This will be their presentations will be followed by a panel discussion and questions from the audience to the speakers and to the panel that will in also include Professor Song Yang Yu from Korea and Professor Jose Garcia Romney from Spain. Following the discussion, Professor Sebastian Wolf. Uh, who will lead the discussion, will close uh, the session with some conclusions. So without further ado, it is a pleasure for me to invite Professor Zofia Navrotska from Poland to speak in favor of the inverted flap technique. Professor Navrotska, I think, is one of the developers of this technique, and it is a great honor to have you with us tonight. Zofia, please. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee, Professor Levenstein, Professor Wolf, to organizing this, let's hope, very interesting debate. I would, of course, love to meet you, all of you in person, but uh, now it's possibly online only. Uh, so in my presentation, I would like to focus on the point that how we start is even more important than how we finish. And I will explain it in a couple of next slides. Uh, in repeated macular hole surgery, we can encounter two situations. First of all, we can have patients that have the primary surgery with complete ILM peeling. And in those cases, when we include those flat open closures, we can have uh, about 40% of failures in large macular holes. First of all, I would like to focus uh, on that patients in uh, whom we perform the temporal or the inverted ILM flap technique during the first surgery. Of course, sometimes they also fail, but it's uh, not that frequent. Uh, and we counted it's about in about 5% of cases. Uh, we made a big retrospective study a few years ago, and we analyzed 830 patients in whom we performed either the inverted ILM flap technique or the temporal inverted ILM flap technique. Uh, and in our study, it was 3.8% of patients that had a surgical failure and in whom it was needed to make repeated surgery. Uh, during repeated surgery, when the first surgery was either the inverted island flap or the temporal inverted island flap, repeated surgery is quite easy uh, because the only thing we have to do is to reinvert the flap. We can stain the island, usually we can see the flap, uh, we can only reinvert it, sometimes also peel some parts of ILM from other uh, parts of the fovea. Uh, we can create a nasal flap, a superior flap, and the surgery can we uh, finish with both air or silicon oil. Uh, we did not find any statistically significant differences between silicon oil tamponade and air tamponade in repeated surgery when we did a repeated, repeated surgery with the temporal inverted ILM flap technique. And you can see the anatomical results here in this slide. During secondary uh, Of course, we must think about the fact that in repeated surgeries, our final results are worse than in primary successful surgery. Usually those eyes have uh, also larger diameters than those that succeeded during the first one. Uh, but finally, after 12 months, we observed about 30% of U-shaped closures with that technique. Uh, but have in mind that about 60% of Asian patients had some photoreceptor irregularities uh, up to the end of the follow-up. Uh, of course, we observed improvement of visual acuities, but still the final visual acuities were worse than those which we observed in patients that succeeded during the first intervention, but that's quite obvious. Um, but when we have the situation that the primary surgeon peeled the ILM completely, of course, we cannot do uh, the inverted ILM flap again. We do not have any ILM left. 
Uh, in those situations, we have to use any of uh, other proposed techniques that based somehow on the inverted ILM flap. Morizane and co-workers presented a very interesting technique of autologous transplantation of paracentral ILM. Uh, it is not that easy because we must uh, understand that the ILM is getting thinner and thinner when we go to the periphery of the fovea. Here is an example of a traumatic macular hole in a young patient in whom I peeled the ILM completely during the, during the first surgery, which I do not usually do, uh, but in this case it was very difficult to detach the posterior hyaloid. As you have seen in the OCTs, the first surgery failed, so I had to take a small part of autologous ILM from outside the vascular arcades. In these situations, it is ex extremely important to close the infusion line just before you peel uh, finally the peripheral ILM, as it is quite easy to lose it. I usually stabilize it uh, with, uh, uh, with viscoelastic material. As you can see, the ILM is quite sticky and it's not so easy to get rid of it and situate it on the fovea. You can finish such a surgery with a tamponade. Uh, of course, there are plenty of other techniques uh, that were published previously, and it is extremely difficult to compare between them. Here you can see the results um, of a, a patient treated with an autologous ILM transplantation. Uh, you can see that the fovea normalizes with time, but still even two years after surgery, there are some defects of the photoreceptors. Um, and here is the swab source OCT and geography of that patient. Uh, I would like to show you the comparison between a patient with an autologous flap and a patient after a repeated surgery with the temporal inverted island flap. Uh, you can see on the choriocapillaris layer a kind of shadow um, resembling the shape of the autologous island flap, which is not seen uh, after surgery with repeated temporal inverted island flap. Uh, it disappears after some time, so two years after surgery, even though there are some photoreceptor defects, the choriocapillaries of those patients after autologous transplantation of ILM look quite normal. Uh, in cases uh, we do not have um, the uh, autologous ILM, it is also possible to use uh, the uh, lens capsule. Uh, but in my opinion, the results of those techniques are not that excellent as we can see if you use um, the ILM. And of course, uh, there is the um, technique proposed by uh, Professor Rizzo, uh, the amniotic membrane, which is a great resolution for those cases in whom we do not have any ILM left. Uh, but as we see the restoration of the fovea, it lasts quite a long period of time. Uh, and not always leads to full re recovery of the fovea. Uh, I would like now to share with you a case. Uh, it was a patient that came to me just before the pan COVID pandemic uh, began, and the patient came with two failed macular hole surgeries. Uh, before COVID, I performed the first surgery with an amniotic membrane, so you can see the results uh, almost two years after surgery, and in the second eye, I did the surgery like two weeks ago. So you can see the surgery after two weeks. Uh, in the left eye, the primary surgeon did not peel the ILM completely. Uh, so I could do the temporal inverted ILM flap technique. In the right eye, the primary surgeon uh, peeled all the ILM off. So the amniotic membrane had to be, um, uh, transplantation had to be performed. Uh, so now I'd like to show you, to compare the uh, images of repeated inverted ILM flap, uh, autologous ILM transplantation, and amniotic membrane. Uh, in, so and in my opinion, it is better to start with the inverted ILM flap because in that situation, if we even encounter repeated surgery, you do not have to use all those all excellent techniques 
And finally, those patients might have better functional and anatomical resu results. Thank you for your attention. So uh, thank you very much, Zofia. That was excellent. Uh, your movies are amazing. And uh, I, I think really you should be chapeaued for developing this technique. Uh, I know together with uh, Professor Yezhin of Rotsky. And uh, really, I'm, uh, it was very, very impressive. And as I said before, I think it is uh, the greatest honor for both for you and for us as a panel to have uh, the debater speaking in favor of different methods. Uh, the um, number one surgeon, I think, in uh, Europe, maybe in the world, Professor Stan Rizzo, uh, who will speak in favor of the different methods, some of which were developed by Professor Rizzo uh, himself and others. Professor Rizzo, please, please take the control of the slides. So the first is Jose Garcia Rumi, my good friend. Right. Thank you for this. <laughs> absolutely, <one>. absolutely. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, before I start into, with my talk, I'm, I'm not opposite Professor Nabrowski. I completely agree with that. Because in case of recurrence macro hole, if you have a failed macro hole, if you have an ILM, of course, the first choice is to use the ILM of the patient. But no ILM far from, 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 the, from the hole, but ILM around the hole. This is a better technique, we have, the best technique we have, Nowadays, with the treatment of macular hole, and Sophia showed very well this this theory. So, uh, with the term of refractory macular hole, we have this is a generic definition that includes a reopened macular hole. This means that uh, a far macular hole occurred after surgical induced closure. This happens uh, sometimes, also some after after some months of the, of the from, from the first surgery. And, uh, and uh, the second term is the unclosed persistent macular hole. This is the failure of your surgery. This is the, the whole didn't kind of close at the end of the surgery. And the percentage of the failure of the, full, of the, of the uh, surgery for macular hole is about from, is, uh, can, is coming from 4% to 11%. And many are the causes of these surgical failures. First of all, of course, is the full, is the size of the hole and the duration of the hole. The association with the myopia, and myopia are many times, sometimes uh, we have failure in our surgery. The partial removal of peritoneal attraction, the LM, uh, and of course, insufficient gas, gas tampon and poor, poor compliance by of the patient. So we know, and Sophia showed very well this, 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 uh, this, uh, this technique, that inverted macro hole is the technical choice for large and extra large macro hole. But in this hole, we have a, a recurrence about from 4 to 10%. Uh, we have many techniques for inverted macro hole. Uh, the Professor Navroska studied very well these techniques. The classic inverted path, uh, flap technique, the temporal inverted flap technique, and the, the autologous transplantation of free flap technique. This means the creation of free island flap, starting from the other border of the complete island peeling, a place over the hole for, to cover it. So if we demonstrate with this paper published some years ago with a large series, more than 600 eyes, with a fat of macula hole, that uh, the island peeling, the, uh, the inverted flap technique is very useful, first of all, in, macro, in large macula hole, larger than 400 microns, and patient with myopia eye. So, but in this paper with uh, more than 4,000, 40,000 40, eyes operated with, with parpasal vitrectomy for macular hole, and uh, about 6% of the eyes return to the operating room for, for failure of macular surgery. Also in, in USS, in US, they have this big problem of failure of the surgery. Of, for macula hole. So, but what to do if you don't have uh, ILM peeling in the periodal area? What to do if the surgeon has already peeled completely the ILM? And this, the fantasy of the surgeon is, is very, is fantastic. We start with laser, 
passing through the agent, the agents, for example, the autolysis platelet concentrate. We, we, uh, we use it for some time, gas tamponade. We used it some years ago. Even Siliconoia was one of the uh, inventors of this technique. And uh, to arrive nowadays to fill a substance, for example, the LM autolysis transplant, the capsule lens fragment, and the most modern techniques as the neurosensory predating a free flap at the human amniotic membrane. So nowadays we, we, we pass from peel or not to peel. Is that, is that the question? We arrive to fear or not to fear? Is that the question? So we change completely the, the, our idea about the macro recurrence in macro surgery. So my, I like to highlight my, my about today, I think the most diffuse technique for recurrent persistent macroloma. The, the use of autologous platelet concentrate and the use of fluid substance, ILM, autologous transplant. So we already said something about this. The neurosensory rate in a free flap and the human amniotic membrane. So these are the, all the papers. Ah, sorry, I like to show you only paper published on peer reviewed journals. So studies, of course, because we are talking about scientific uh, problems, uh, how to solve this, uh, following the evidence of the, or, or the medicine or of the ophthalmology. These are the papers published with the use of autologous platelet concentrate. You know that we can use autologous platelet concentrate because it contains many growth factors and have a, should be shown to promote tissue healing. And we have very good results. These are the paper with plasma growth factor. It's completely different from a, a platelet factor. And we have a very good result, anatomic result, from 57% to uh, about 100% with uh, small series or also with series of about 50 eyes. But we have some, some problem with the use of those platelet construct. We know that the autologous platelet concentrate is uh, inducing full macular, macular clot, to thickness of macular closure, activating free fibrillary proliferation. But the problem is that we use blood, and the blood can be toxic. See, of course, if the blood goes under the retina. It's toxic because it produces, it releases free radicals and proliferative substance that affect the photoreceptors. So in this, Last trial, randomized control trial, we have a, a good anatomical, higher anatomical success rate using, using autologous concentrate platelets. But the problem is the use that don't seem to improve the anatomical, the functional outcome of the surgery. So this is the technique that, that uh, Professor Navroska already, uh, already showed. The autologous free LM flap transplantation. Many papers, many papers with uh, maybe small, uh, small series, about two, three, four eyes, but with good anatomical results, also in this case, starting from 80%, arriving to 100%. Uh, we, uh, but in, an, in a recent meta analysis review, uh, the free LM flap comparing autologous to retina or LM seem to give us the poorest visual recovery. Why this? We published some years ago a small series about the use of autologous limiting membrane plaque. And then they, uh, we operate eight patients. This was on, on one of the cases of the patient. You see the image of the OCT after the some months. You see this is, it seems a plaque. So maybe the, the liars were, were multiple, but the problem was this. If we show that the extra macro IL cause glial cell proliferation. And this is because, of course, the ILM may be a scaffold for tissue proliferation, but the extra macro ILM far from the macro, from the macro region uh, contains different types of cells as fibroblasts like cells. And this can cause this glial, glial plaque where the photosepals are able, are, are able, are able, are able to slide. This is the technique that Tamer Mahmoud showed a few years ago, is the autologous retinal transplant. The, 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 it was the autologous neurosensory retinal free flap, uh, selected usually from the superior temporal arcade, 
uh, superior to the similar arcade, position over the refractory macula. This was a, was a one of my case. After a AV laser under perfluorocarbon, you pull you uh, pull, pull the the flap the retina flap over the macula hole. Uh, these are the series published for this technique. You see some some papers, and this was the with good anatomical results, no very good functional results. This is the last paper published of ophthalmology, uh, I think last month about the global consortium. And uh, the problem was the different, uh, uh, the, 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 this series, this paper was done by 33 revitalizer surgeons with complete different techniques. Mm -hmm. Some of them using perfluorocarbon for a short term tamponade. Some of them use uh, silicon oil. Some of them use perfluorocarbon uh, gas. So I think different techniques uh, can, uh, we can have different results. But at the end of the day, they show that 89% of closure rate in macro surgery and 95% closure rate in macro retinal detachment. Arriving to the, my, my, you know, you know very well why. This was the, uh, also about this technique, there are some, some paper are, are, uh, are on, on the, on PubMed, this was the, the technique to to remove the with a small trefine a, a disc of uh, the amniotic membrane. You can of course regulate the measure of your disc depending on the, the size of, of the hole. All this this is the, it's the classic technique used now since uh, some 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 years. This is a disc about one one thousand five hundred microns. Uh, the secret, I, sh I saw the, 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 the photo picture of, of Sophia. The secret is uh, to have only one layer of the yeah. amniotic membrane, no many layers because the wires have a plaque. And uh, the layer, the, the, the layer, the, this, this thin layer of the amniotic membrane has to be under the retina and order the photoreceptors can slide mm -hmm. over the membrane. Uh, different with, um, with, uh, with, uh, uh, Retinal transplant, you need only one surgery. You tamponade this, uh, this eye only with air with very short position, only a few hours after the, after the, after the, the surgery. This is the uh, uh, amniotic membrane with, uh, of course, uh, in this uh, um, review, comparing the uh, ILM flap, the free ILM flap, the autologous retina, and the amniotic membrane, the subgroup amniotic membrane show a functional recovery at least double compared with other surgical technique. So this I, I shall like to show, to show you some some picture. You see that this is the very large macula hole with some atrophy in the uh, retinal pigment epithelium. You see there's a very thin layer. This is a secret to have only one layer of retinal me membrane. After the follow eight months of your know, follow up, you see the some reconstitution of the of the external retinal membrane of the membrane. We, for, we carry out also the adaptive optics. After some months, you see only mild reduction re re of adaptive optics compared with LPI. This is the comparison of, uh, uh, of the uh, adaptive optics between autologous cell and transplant, a human amniotic member. You see the difference. You see uh, many receptors with uh, greater average of condensity in amniotic member patients. And as in you know, OCD and geography, you see enlargement of the fovela zone of, uh, of the fats in LM patient and normal appearance and size in amniotic patient. So in conclusion, we know that uh, despite the improving surgical technique, we have still between five and 30% of patients with, 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 uh, who have unsuccessful surgery. At all splatter, like we have a very good anatomy success, but no significant difference in functional acta, actum. At all retinal transplant technique, we need at, at two surgeries, and many times the first surgery is very difficult. And I'm not a member, of course, I am a big bias. It's my favorite technique. Thank you very much for your attention. <clears throat> yes, thank, thank you, Stan, for this excellent talk. I think uh, now we, we have the panel discussion um, for the talks.
uh, we have some questions from the audience, uh, but maybe first I would like to ask Sophia the question. So if you start macular hole surgery, uh, if you use uh, your inverted technique, um, you use this always or you remove the ILM usually or you don't uh, touch the ILM in small holes or what is your technique in primary holes? So in primary macular holes, my usual technique is nowadays the temporal inverted ILM flap technique. So I peel the ILM from the temporal side and I do it in all holes. Very rarely in very, very young people when it is very difficult to detach the posterior hyaloid, as I showed in the video, but it happens once uh, a couple of years, I have to peel the whole ILM. Uh, but usually I do the temporal inverted ILM flap technique in all cases. I was also surprised by what you said, that uh, the, usually you don't do it because I think that most of us, I don't know, Sebastian, you are such an experienced surgeon and uh, Pepe and... I'm used to always peel the ILM in in the primary surgery, so maybe maybe it's Jose. I don't know. Exactly, Jose. What 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 are you doing? Uh, I, I uh, do it in cases uh, with the small macro holes under uh, 400 microns. I peel uh, the regular surgery in in macro holes. I peel the ILM around the hole. Uh, I, I don't I do. A very big uh, peeling of, of the of the hole, and in most of the cases, 95, 98 percent of the cases, the, the hole closes. But in, in more than 500 microns, I prefer to do the inverted flap, and, and mainly in, in myopic patients. In Spain, we have a lot of myopic patients, and uh, really, in, in myopic patients, is a big difference, a huge difference. Stano showed in in his publication with 600. Uh, uh, patients with macular hole that really over uh, 26 millimeters of axial length, the rate of closure is uh, much higher with uh, inverted flap than uh, with uh, the regular technique. So, Siyun, how, how you are you doing it? In, in Korea, probably you have more myopic holes. And, uh... Yes, so if I have a myopic patient, I do some, I do the inverted IRM peel, uh, IRM flap technique, but usually for the regular uh, macula hole, uh, I do peel the whole ILM around the hole. Is, is there any um, dependency on the size? So in big holes, you are not peeling all the ILM, or in small holes, you are, or is it Pepe is, is adjusting his technique on the size? Are you doing this? Yes, if I have really big macular hole, like a five, a more than 500 micrometer, so I do a flap, but usually I uh, remove whole ILM. Okay, and Stan, Stan you are doing the same? Uh, always spilling the LM, in the LM flap in larger hole in my OPI. Okay, so only myopic eye. So, Anna, I, I think we are the old people. Yeah, I think yeah. all the RM. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I already learned a lot from you guys because I, I, I'm just usually peeling the ILM, but uh, maybe it's, it's a, a, I mean, not peeling the whole ILM leaves a space for then using it. I, I understand that you, then you can do it uh, inverted yeah. flap in recurrent holes, right? Yeah, so, so we have a question from, from the audience um, for Sophia. I think, do you think that the ILM orientation makes a difference? So is it important, uh, important to have the reverse flap placing versus the flap placed in a normal uh, way on the whole? So usually we position the uh, ILM in, in an inverted fashion. It's um, only possible to position it um, not upside down when we uh, make a pedicle surgery or the autologous flap. And in fact, um, as it was presented in those two presentations, if we use the autolo uh, autologous flap, so if we take the uh, ILM from outside the fovea, the results are worse than if we just invert the ILM. 
So uh, in my opinion, it is important to lie it upside down. It's, it gives our better function and anatomy. And, and do I understand it right? You're using only air as tamponade afterwards? Or? Yes, I always use air. I do not use and never used any long acting gases. Um, and I think that we have studies that confirm that uh, the closure process, it takes only a few hours after surgery. So the most important is the first day afterwards. And in only few cases, it happens to close afterwards. So, and because of that, we uh, air tamponade lasts for about five to seven days. And I think it is completely okay for most patients to use this tamponade. Would you agree with this, Pepe? Yeah, I think it's completely true. Really, um, if you perform an OCT the day after the surgery, you can see how is the hole in 90% in of the cases. And it was a very interesting uh, publication of uh, Klaus Ecker that uh, they compare the closure rate uh, during the first days. And in the first day, if the hole is closed in 70% of the cases, this hole will maintain closed. And the, the, the eyes that don't have a, a, a closed uh, macular hole in the first day is quite difficult to close. But in 20% of the cases may close in the, in the second or in the, in the third day. But uh, I don't know if it's better to perform the temporal flap or the superior flap? What do you think about this, uh, Sofia? I think it's easier to close the hole if you do the temporal flap, because usually you uh, put the flute needle near to the optic nerve. Yeah. So if you make a temporal flap, the natural flow of the water covers the hole. Uh, and of course, in cases we do repeated surgery, sometimes we have to use the superior flap or the nasal flap, but I have the feeling that it is uh, slightly more difficult to have the uh, confidence that it is completely closed in the end of surgery. So my usual choice is the temporal side. And it's also more safe to remove a temporal side. If you touch the nasal side of the because you can cause some problem of the, of the fibers. On the I, fibers. I agree, so, but, but a lot of surgeons perform the superior flap instead of a temporal flap. I agree that it's better the temporal flap. But uh, they, they, they argue that uh, really the, the uh, position, the, the, the normal position of the head uh, makes that the flap uh, goes uh, down. And, and that's why uh, they prefer to perform the superior flap. And, uh, but you have uh, mentioned, uh, Sophia, that uh, in uh, some cases you use uh, um, silicon oil in, in the autologous flap transplantation. What, what do you say? I don't like too much uh, silicon oil for, for, for macular hole closure. Uh, no, in fact, in autologous island flap, I usually use air. But uh, it is true that when we perform the first surgeries of repeated uh, failed uh, primary inverted island flaps, in some part we used air, in some part we used silicone oil. As in fact, at the beginning, we did not know which would be better for the patients. Um, you must understand that those were the first surgeries, first failed surgeries of the inverted island flap. Now, uh, after the study, we know that um, it does not matter. We can use air in the secondary surgeries, but at the beginning, there were also plenty of papers uh, showing that silicon oil tamponade during the second surgery is superior. Um, so uh, at, at the beginning, we used both. Uh, in, uh, nowadays, I very rarely perform the surgeries with the lens capsule. I think it's the worst uh, idea in repeated surgery, but in those, I always use uh, silicon oil as the lens capsule is very difficult to hold with air. It's quite heavy. Uh, but now, uh, after the introduction of amniotic membrane, I abandoned those lens capsule surgeries and uh, never do them now. Okay. Uh, I, I have a question from the audience. Maybe Stan and uh, Sophia, you can comment on it. Um, is it preferred to bury the free flaps under the hole margin or is it better uh, to try to keep it above it. So, Stan, you have shown that amniotic membrane should be underneath the retina, and Sophia, you have shown that the inverted flap is uh, um, above the retina. So, um, could you comment on this? Maybe first, Stan? Yeah, 
I, I think the problem is this. Of course, if you want, if you want to use a very short-term tampon as a, as a air, for example, no, you have to put something under the rating. Otherwise, it's possible to, to hold the over the rating at this this uh, because we. I mean, many times it happens that if you open only the infusion during the surgery, the, the, for example, the, the ILM or the amyot member floats in the visual chamber, and you lose, you lose mm -hmm. that. So this, this is a problem, of course. Under the retina, it's, it's more safe because it stays uh, at that place without any other maneuver. The problem, of course, so, under the retina means you have to touch the photoreceptors at, at least on the edge of the hole. This maybe can be made more dangerous at least, but uh, I don't know. But over the rating, uh, we start with the rating, but in some cases, with the, we, we lost the membrane, the amniotic, at least the membrane after a few cases, but we lost the, the uh, Of course, we, we were aware of this problem after the surgery, and then <laughs> maybe the day after. It was very it was very pleasant for the patient to be. We have to receive the third or fourth operation because you, we lost the amniotic. Or sometimes, sometimes, some other. Can, can can you comment on the tamponade? Are you using air or gas or uh, only air? Only air. So this seems to be consensus. Few, uh, under the rating, a few hours proposition. Only air. I think that uh, for using the amniotic membrane under the rating, it's very important to have only one layer of, of uh, membrane. Yeah. I think the mm -hmm. result is much better. This kind of scar that maintains some months in the middle of the macro hole is because they have used a multi-layered uh, amniotic membrane. With only one layer, it's much easier to, to introduce under the retina. Do you use uh, special instruments for introducing the, this uh, layer of amniotic membrane under the retina to be as safe as possible? Yes, because many times after months, of course, you have a very, a very thick Hedge of the a rigid fibrotic hedge uh, of the hole. And it's impossible to penetrate under the right if you don't elevate this edge. So I, I have a spatula, for example, a, a very simple spatula. We always sometimes use the tissue manipulator or the illuminated tissue manipulator without light to elevate. But many sometimes you can only the pressure of the amniotic can elevate the, the edge of the membrane. I think so the only object, the, I think the only ob object, the only problem with this technique is you have to touch the edge of the right in order to elevate. I, I, I like so that. What, 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 what you think about putting some water under or some BSS underneath the retina with a 40 gauge needle to elevate uh, the uh, hole? Uh, have you tried this? I, I try many times, but the, the problem is that you separate the photoreceptors. The foot of other is all around the macula, all around the hole. I'm very scared. For example, I'm starting to, of course, it's completely different because it's completely different the argument. But I start to inject, for example, Luxturna under the macula for uh, RPS 65 genetic problem. And the patient uh, uh, accused for some months a black, a black spot on the, under the macula for uh, in, his, in their vision because maybe we separate the photoreceptor. So I'm very scared to elevate the macula with some some BSS, some fluid. I prefer only to elevate the edge of the membrane. So, of the so, macula hole. And so that, Pierre, could could you comment on putting the membrane underneath the retina or only above the retina? And there have been many questions around how to fix this flap um, or a, a free flap. How you do this? Do you use PFCL or P, PFOs or this elastics or no, no. Some... for retina, for retina, you have, you have to use PF, PFO. Uh, you have to exchange the PFO directly with silicone oil. You cannot pass through air. Or well, some surgeon uh, uh, maintain the PFO for two weeks because they they said that they say that the PFO can can assure you a, a, a good a better exchange of oxygen. Because the PFO is a good carrier for oxygen. So, for example, Steve Charles maintains the PFO for two weeks in order that the PFO press the retina over the of the hole. So you have to have some tamponade. You cannot pass through BSS because otherwise you lose the the, 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 the retina, yeah. the flap mm -hmm. of the retina. And so Sophia, you 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 put the free flap underneath the retina or above? 
I usually try to put everything on top of the fovea because I have the impression, as uh, Stanislao said before, that it, I'm a little bit afraid of touching the RPE and photoreceptors. Uh, but in fact, it is also true that in those cases, uh, you do not put it inside, you lose the flap in some cases. I think until we have a good um, comparative study, it is very difficult to say what is better, putting it underneath or putting it above. But uh, me personally, I usually put it above, but I also tried to detach the fovea with BSS subretinally and then to gently putting the uh, amniotic membrane inside. And I have the feeling it's a quite elegant technique. Okay, so... Uh, I would like to, to, to say that uh, it's really good for stabilizing the, the ILM, the autologous uh, transplantation, or everything that you want to put into the macular area, uh, 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 and the autologous retinal transplant, to use uh, the uh, autologous uh, platelet. Uh, because really, you can obtain like an adhesive to put over this material that you want to put uh, into the macular area. And you can fix it quite well. Really, you can use only uh, this, uh, like fibrin glue, or uh, uh, into the macular area. Only this, but I, I prefer to use uh, the ILM or other materials, but uh, to fixate them with the with the the fibrin glue, and uh, it's uh, quite uh, stable. Mm -hmm. And you you can have really this material quite safe, uh, and uh, this material will not move from the macular area. Yeah, but Jose, um, or paper, if you use this, this material, these materials, these platelets, my experience is that many holes then close even without any additional material. So what is your experience just using platelets for um, unclosed holes? Well, uh, I, I did use a lot of uh, platelets concentrate uh, some years ago in the era of the transporting row factor beta. It was the... the yeah, many years ago. Many years yeah. Yeah. yeah, in my fellowship we used it. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, nowadays I prefer to place something into the macular area to, to close, really. Uh, yeah, it's, because it's, it's... Uh, the rate of closure only with platelet concentrate in my hands is quite low. Okay, so Siyun, so what, what are you doing? Uh, you, you use oh. air as well and, uh, and put the flap above the retina or below the retina or what's, what's your technique then? So I put uh, the, so if, I, uh, if, uh, the, if I use the free ILM flap, I, I put the ILM over the hole and I try to use a PFCL to uh, for the stabilization, but however, it still is very difficult to keep that in the place. So I would like to ask uh, the tip to stay at the flap on the on the on the top of the hole. I would like to ask. I I heard that. Uh, uh, Jofia said uh, you close the infusion for a while when you when you put the uh, flap under the hole. So I think that's the good uh, tip. So I would like to know the tip. So I you and I use a gas still because I <laughs> I think the the time of duration of filling full fill a guess is really important because some patient cannot position very well. So I still use the gas tamponade. Yeah, we, we, I, I use still gas tamponade as well. And I, I have the impression it's working well. And I, I use always SF6, but I have colleagues, they use C3, F8 and tell me this is much better. And um, then I hear air is sufficient. So I'm a little bit... Uh, I'm sure now. I'm also using <laughs> SF6, and uh, I think that I, from now, from tomorrow, I'll use air. <laughs> <laughs> I really so, think it's, it's in, but, it's in but there are many questions around the uh, amniotic membrane. And mm -hmm. Stan, can you explain us what side of the membrane you put uh, 
down to the RP and what side is going up? So is it the uh, epithelial side or the non-epithelial side? Uh, how you manage it, how you know which side is up? Um, I think it's very difficult to see uh, during surgery. How you manage it? And also, how do you know that it's one layer? I mean, both of you emphasized, you and Pepe, how important it is. How do you know that it's one, all these technical things? How do you know it? Sure. The, uh, first of all, the layer. The, 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 the amniotic member is coming with only one layer, of course. If you, of course, you uh, put the membrane, if you, over, uh, you have many layers, so you, of course, you have to be that is only one layer because it's coming with only one layer. Uh, maybe you... Uh, the first time, the first time, of course, we put more, more. Maybe the membrane was larger than the, the, the hole. Of course, it's larger than the hole. You have many folds. It is not only one layer. The problem is you don't have, you, have, you have, cannot have fold with your layer. So it, the amniotic has two sides. One is the the pit, epithelial side. The other one is the corneal side. The corneal side is completely different in the aspect. You have to magnify the microscope, the maximum magnification. You see the coron site is very soft. It's in some, it has some, uh, some. Uh, it, it remains adherent to the forces. You have the, if you open the forceps, the site, uh, which is the, the coron remains adherent to the force. You, you recognize with this, with this tip. If you, of course, if you put the coronal layer on the retinal peak epithelium on the retina, it remains adherent as soon you put on the retina. It's, it, it's touch the retina. Uh, I think it's very simple because uh, uh, dealing with the force of you see where is the 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 coronal layer, it, it, which means it is it, the coronal is it is very adhesive to every every tissue of instrument uh, is coming uh, is 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 going into touch. How large size of amniotic membrane do you use the skin traffic? I can, of course, it is a, the OCT gives me the dimension of the of the, of the hole. If it's the hole is one millimeter, so I use one 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 fifty hundred microns of amniotic membrane, so one millimeter mm -hmm. and a half. Uh, usually, five hundred microns more than the the, the the dimension of the hole in order to put the amniotic under the edge. And we have many trephines starting from one millimeter arrive. For example, in, we, we, we use a multi member for very, very uh, large break in, uh, in posterior pole in uh, myopic, for example, in the area mm -hmm. of, of course, a big atrophy. This, of course, is you cannot have a visual recovery, but at least you attach the retina. In myopia eye, where you have this large area of atrophy with the break in the posterior pole, completely mm -hmm. difficult to complete it. Uh, uh, possible to close, and uh, many times you have to you have to maintain the silicone oil for uh, all the life of the patient. Uh, in this case, we use this amniotic in order to to close the this big break in the posterior pole in, uh, in the atrophic area. And uh, we use in this case uh, four or five millimeters of amniotic mm -hmm. Panel, uh, someone is asking if there is a specific lab for this uh, 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 amniotic, amniotic membrane. membrane. Yeah, it's a it's an important question. Now, usually, we use the tissue bank because in Italy we we have the the tissue bank for the cornea and also for amniotic. Yeah. I I know, for example, in in US they start to use the frozen amniotic membrane, and I think the the, 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 the the I think it works very well. Or also the frozen amniotic membrane, mm -hmm. but in Italy we have mm -hmm. the the luckiness to have the fresh amniotic membrane coming coming to tissue bank. So, so there, there are some questions around the visual outcome. So um, may, maybe both of you can comment on it. So um, what is better? Is it amniotic membrane? Is it autolocus retina implant? Is it free flap of ILM? Uh, so what, what's your choice for the visual outcome if you have a persistent macular hole after peeling? So if there's no ILM left, at least around the uh, four. Sorry. Can, can I start? Because of yeah, course my choice is, is amniotic. Because we pass through uh, ILM, autologous ILM flap. We pass through uh, retina, autologous retina. 
The problem, of course, they are, we are operating a very large macro hole, very large, more than 1,000, more than 1,500 microns. I don't know why we cannot wait a very good visual results. It's impossible. Many times this all has some atrophy, atrophy of the retinal pico epithelium. And of course, the retinal epithelium, you cannot regenerate retinal pico epithelium because the photoreceptor can slide on the, over the membrane, over the LM, but the problem is the regeneration of the retinal tissue. This is impossible. So the problem is this. Maybe we are talking about uh, uh, very low visual acuity after the surgery. But remember, the, patient, the patients many times are very happy because they can see the OCT with the macro hole closed. So for them, maybe it is also a good, a great success to have a macro hole closed, to be out of the tunnel. I'm saying that we are out of the tunnel because the macro hole is closed. Maybe the visual acuity is not very good, but I think, I think amniotic gives us some more, more, more chance to have a, not good, but a better visual acuity than the, 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 the operative time. Sophia, would you agree with it? So, uh, so I agree with the fact that we do all those techniques in really failed cases. Sometimes it is the third or even the fourth surgery for those patients. And the uh, thing that makes them most happy is that they lose the negative scotoma. So if they have a closed hole, uh, it, no, uh, no matter if it's the autologous transplant or amniotic, they lose the negative scotoma. The final visual acu acuity, I think if it is uh, 0.1 or 0.2, it's really excellent. In many cases, after amniotic membrane, we achieve, and with uh, autologous island flap, we achieve visual acuities mm -hmm. slightly lower the, than 0.1. Uh, but it is still better than uh, the patients had before. David, would you agree with this? So can, could you comment on this? Yeah, I, I really, in cases with um, closed macular holes, but the, the hole is not really, really so big. It's less than 1,000 microns. I, I still use autologous uh, uh, ILM transplantation. In, in holes bigger than, than 1,000, I think that the only way is with the amniotic membrane or with the retinal transplantation. My, my personal experience with retinal transplantations, I have only performed surgery in 10 cases, is not a big series, but I was very surprised with this uh, very recent publication with the global consortium with uh, 130 cases from 33 surgeons that they had quite surprising, very good uh, final visual acuities with an improvement of uh, and more than three lines in a lot of patients, more than 40% of the patients. In my cases, the, the improvement of this solarity is not as spectacular in those cases. They maintain, in some cases, they, they improve a little, but uh, not as much as three lines of this solarity. Maybe um, your cases were older cases. You cannot compare because, you know, it's a different setting, different studies. Maybe it's uh, more chronic cases, the ones that you have. No, but uh, but uh, the 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 AU operated cases between the 900 and the 1,500 uh, microns. But uh, this this uh, study is quite heterogeneous in the sense that uh, there are a lot of surgeons. Um, the tamponade is completely different from one to the other. They can choose uh, the site uh, of of uh, the size of the transplantation. Uh, is, uh, it was the only way to do this study because there are not so many cases that need uh, retinal transplantation. But really, the, the visual acuity was very good. Probably my technique was not perfect, but I would like to know the experience of Stano or the Sofia about this this technique. We are Stano. sure that your technique was perfect, Pepe. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, it, it seems that uh, nobody has really good visual acuity uh, after these techniques, but uh, there's some uh, visual acuity which may be better than a whole. Um, th there's one question which is um, probably everyone could comment on this, the post-operation positioning. How long, how is it important? Is it depending on the tamponade? Uh, how long you do it, uh, Sophia? How, how you do it with air? How, how long do the patient position? And how do they position? Okay, I'm very strict for the first post-operative day. 
and I recommend strict prone positioning and then advise the patient to maintain most of the time um, with a head down positioning uh, three to five days after surgery. Oh, thank, thank God. You. I thought here also I'm doing something very old fashioned. <laughs> yeah, so so the, the first day you are very strict and the days afterwards, what is, uh, what is most of the time? Is it half hour of an hour or is it... Uh, 50 minutes in an hour, what, what is it? Uh, I, I tell the patient that they can eat, they can go to the toilet, and the rest of the time they uh, stay with a head down. And during the first day, I recommend them to uh, keep the head down all the time, like 100%. Oh, so of time. basically five days position. Yeah. Stand. If you use air, of course, the first day has to be, I am I'm very severe. If you use only air, if you use gas, I use it usually use C2F6 because there is a good paper published in UK that they show that with the S6F6 they don't have very good results. So uh, I I permit the patient. Yes, it's true. It's, it's, it's published. Yeah, but, but, but this is published and then it's published that air is as good uh, as S6. So very difficult to understand. <laughs> of course, if you use uh, gas, I, uh, I permit the patient to stay on the side because I think it's very difficult to maintain for five days the uh, prone position. Okay. So, Pepe, how, how are you positioning your patients? I, I, I do more or less the same, but uh, I, I use more SF6 than air because... Yeah, but, but, but Pepe, be, be specific. What's more or less the same? So what, what's the first day and the second day? How strong are you? I, I, I uh, try to have the patient four days in, in, the, in the prone position, uh, but not so strict the 24 uh, first hours. But uh, mm -hmm. I use all, uh, in, in all, all, most of the cases SF6. In, in cases with less than 400 uh, microns macular hole, I use air, but in the other cases, I use SF6. Okay. And so, Young, how, how strong are you with positioning? Yeah, I use SF6 gas and 24 hours strict. And then I, I, can, I, I, I usually said to patient, don't lay down, so head up position. Don't head up position, but you can sit. You can eat and and you can lay side. But usually I said to them a head down positioning for three days and then you can rest uh, and then the 12 hours uh, head down position for two more days. So five days. OK, Anat, how are you doing it? I'm doing five <laughs> days. I'm doing SF6. I mean, until today, as of tomorrow, it's going to be air, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, in five days, and I tell them, uh, I don't uh, differentiate between the first day and the other four days. I say most of the time face down, at least 16 hours per day. You can sit, you, you can uh, eat, you can uh, drink, you can go to the toilet, you can shower, but other than that, keep your face down. And so I say, I'm, never I, lie. I'm similar. <laughs> I'm, I'm similar, I'm doing SF6, and I'm quite strict for the first 24 hours, but afterwards I just tell them not to lay on their back, and mm -hmm. otherwise I'm, I'm not so strict after 24 hours. Um, so you, you see everyone is doing it similar but different. It's, it's very interesting, <laughs> isn't it? So, so there's a question, are you suturing uh, the sterotomies? Um, to to avoid uh, air or gas leakage, maybe uh, see you. Yeah, the problem is, no. of course, we are we are operating. I think as a, in a Israel or in Spain, many myopia eye, and uh, of course, I I prefer to use a twenty three gauge in myopia eye because it's it's not flexible. You have the longer longer forceps. So I suture, I suture because 23 is, uh, I, I like to suture the, the yeah. I'm using a, a butterfly suture, very simple, the day after I can remove, very simple, that, that, that is still flat. Okay, so most of us will suture, I think. Baby, are you agree? And uh, Sophia, you agree? 
I, I, I try to do most of my surgeries in 25, even in, in, in my optic patients. If, if it's, uh, the, this is their first surgery, I try not to use uh, sutures because most of the cases flow quite well with 25. If uh, some uh, leakage in one scrotum, I, I suture. And I use uh, butterfly uh, as uh, stanos for removing the, the suture the day after. Because really, the, the, the suture is quite itching to the patient. Eh? You, you mm -hmm. see in the post-op this red point uh, for the suture that mm -hmm. is quite uh, annoying for the patient. Okay, so I, I, I think we are at the end of the debate. Uh, we, we, we are already over time a little bit. I think um, all of us, or at least uh, I have learned a lot, and Anna told us she has yeah. learned a lot as well. So uh, maybe we adapt our techniques um, using less gas, more air, maybe not. I'm, I'm not so sure. Um, and uh, um, it, it seems that all techniques are working quite well. Um, you, if you put something in the hole, um, it, it may be the easiest if you have ILM to put the inverted flap. If you don't have ILM, Maybe amniotic membrane is the way to go uh, if you have the possibility. So I, I, I think it was very interesting. Thank you so much. And I give for the last words uh, the microphone to Anat. Anat, can you close the debate? Thank you yes. so much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you to the excellent speakers, the wonderful lectures. Thank you to the panelists, uh, Son Yang and uh, Jose Arumi. And uh, thank you so much, Sebastian, for moderating it with so many questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Wolf, uh, excellent, excellent job. Thanks a lot. And uh, hope to see you again in uh, the next uh, U Retina webinars, debates, and case conferences that are coming up to be. Have, the, have a nice rest of the summer to all of you. Bye bye. 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 Have a good day. Bye. 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 Enjoy. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. <laughs> See you at uh, your retina virtual. Yeah. Okay. Ciao, Goodbye. Ciao. Bye bye. Bye. Ciao, Anna. Ciao, Pepe. Ciao, ciao everyone. Sebastian. Ciao, ciao Sofia. Ciao, Stan. Bye. Ciao, Sebastian. Bye bye to everyone.